long was I up? I was up for like 36 hours straight. Snot just came out of my nose. Because <laughs> I didn't have enough time to blow it, I guess, in my five hours of sleep. Uh, we are currently driving back to western New York from uh, the Mid-Atlantic Gaming Festival in uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. I wasn't really, you know, huge into remixes, even though I, I, I really, like, enjoy listening to them, but meeting, like, meeting and interviewing, like, Furt and, like, oh. Matt Pollard and, like, all those guys who were, like, who were, like, you know, kind of like the Miniboss's little mini-celebrities in their own right, that was just, like, amazing. Which is a great segue into just all the awesome people that we met at this convention. Yeah, Matt Pollard, crazy Matt man, Pollard, oh my god. Sam from SoFar.net. Virtual Fools, Empire Arcadia, for Stephen Kennedy, DJ Potato, Wave Theory, the Smash Brothers, the mini bosses. <laughs> it sucks that it had to end because there was just so much cool shit that happened. Man, there's so many people I wanted to play. Like, I wanted to play the, the dude dressed up as the guy from Virtual On in Virtual On with the arcade sticks he brought. And, like, I wanted to play Terry Bogard, get my ass beat in Guilty Gear, and play Derek Wong at something. And His name was Jason. Jason Wong, Wong Wong, and get my ass beat, but there just wasn't enough time to do everything. There's just too much shit going on. Imagine about like probably two conventions worth of stuff jammed into one one weekend of conventioning, and that's about what Magfest just was. So many great people, and we're out of tape. Word. Peace right. out. Independent movie company X-Strike Studios makes last-minute changes to their first feature-length video game tribute movie, River City Rumble, to be premiered at MAGFest 2.0. Convention is in like two days, not even. We're leaving in like a day and a half to get there on time. Yeah, I'm missing it. Yeah, why's that? Because I'm going to school. We still got a lot of audio stuff to do. Got to put in credits. But none of that can really happen until Weez gets off the G5. Oh, <sighs> editing! Right. The last one we saw, Steve and I, we were both hard at work on. Uh, Two uh, very ambitious costumes. Um, since then, I was informed by my landlord that he needs money and I don't have it to give. So in order to actually go to Magfest and still pay my rent, I had to abandon uh, working on Pyramid Head. Steve was working diligently straight through the week, putting in about 10 to 15 hours a day on his Predator costume. Until about 11.30 this morning when he apparently decided that it just wasn't going to happen in time. So to rectify this, at about 2 o'clock, Weiss and I ran into him at Walmart where he was buying materials to begin his new costume. <laughs> no matter how far you, you start in advance, be it six months or two weeks, you will never finish a Predator costume on time. Steve is now Slayer from Guilty Gear XX, and I'm now a Tomberry. Let's see, what time it is in relation to the convention? Uh, <laughs> I don't fucking know. I was up editing the Silent Horror trailer last night with Rory. G5 crashed about five times. That was fun. I'm looking forward to, like, entering, like, a billion game tournaments and, like, losing all of them. Remixers abound. Fucking hot nerd ass. Uh, Are you going to get some? Well, yeah. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Hey, press the start button, will you? Press yes. start. So it's me, Ecubus, and Julia in Master Car A. We got silly green car trailing behind us. Because they're too, they're too chicken shit to actually pass us and maybe take the directions that we gave. We did well, pass we, you asshole. <laughs> <laughs> we, we uh, what the hell did that mean? We don't have a speedometer. That was that was Steve fucking with Chad to try and keep himself awake. Steve. Oh. Hey. Oh, Steve's been sleeping. Steve, you know what time it is. I'm gonna take a wild stab at 3:30 in the morning. It is like 5:30 yeah. in the morning. No shit! Yeah. I thought it was extreme irony in the pink bathroom that they call men's room. They like scribbled on top of uh, some shit that's like, oh, I'm going to jerk you off. Oh, you like to, you queer. It's free Mumia. We got a fight. The fuck are you passing me in the middle of that shit? <laughs> because I needed the to fuck get you off. Passing me. <laughs> fucking, we gave you the fucking cell phone. Oh, yeah. Dick. 
There's like this much room, there's a semi, and me, and you're passing me, pulling in front of me in the semi. We had a thing going. You fucking passed a semi before that. I almost got run off the road trying to keep up with you. Team Yoshimitsu, the fucking Yoshimitsu car is in command. He's gonna crash. Turn my t shirt up. I'm gonna go down, nuts and, you know and I'm gonna like on. stick my dick in Dale North's ear. The Popo is busted on an X strike. Where, 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 where? Right behind him. Oh shit, look at this. Right behind him. The sheriff. Oh man, we got hot pursuit. Hot pursuit. Hot pursuit. His compulsive lane jumping has almost gotten us in three accidents now. Oh shit, I almost led Steve the wrong way. I don't fucking know, Steve. That's I'm Steve sorry, followed Steve. behind us. I'm sorry, Steve. This camera roll. <laughs> Fuck you, man. <laughs> Fuck you. This is about a tenth of the volume I was yelling on the fucking road. Why? 84 miles? To what? To, to, to the beach. Oh, well, we're not going to the beach. We're going to Williamsburg. Can we go to the beach? Shut up. Fucking Yoshimitsu drove the whole way without sleeping, man. Yeah, no sleep fucking for Team a. Yoshimitsu. Come on, come on, come All on. Right. Alright, man. Mag fest. Mag fest. It's gonna be on the right. It's gonna be on the right. So you wanna be in the right lane. Oh, where could it be? Where could it be? We're jonesing for it. We're jonesing for it. This woman is jonesing for it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. There it fucking is. Right fucking there. After a perilous 10 hour journey, the two carloads reached their destination at Williamsburg, Virginia. A little late, but just in time for opening ceremonies. The X-Ray crew was ready to say hello to gaming hijinks and goodbye to sleep. So we've got like so many cool people here. All of you are cool whether you are like you know, guests that, or, or people that are like staffing my con or just people that decided to show up. I gotta start up DJ Potato. Well, I'm generic Eric Ruth, otherwise known as DJ Potato. I'm a gamer. I'm a baker for a living, sadly, and uh, I just love to be around people, games, and music. DJ Potato with a lot of knowledge on Parappa, man. I yes. was really surprised. He told me some shit. I dressed up as Parappa. It's my favorite game, and he just told me crap. I didn't even know. Even the newest stuff. You like Parappa? It's a good game. I liked, enjoyed that. Love your outfit. I love it. You gotta tell me where we got the hat. DJ Potato. I love him. The who? Hey, hey, I heard that uh, you guys were going to do a duck hunt movie. So Res is short for Residue? Yeah, we're going to be performing oh, tomorrow man, night. Man, he yeah. Dude, that opening title sequence for the second one? Come on, man, you don't know about Oh, that guy. <laughs> I'd like to take him in the back. When I want you to laugh, I'll tell a joke. Don't you worry. You've noticed when you went to the video game room that the uh, high definition widescreen television is supporting a DDR mix. We are announcing and promoting our newest Dance Dance Revolution Eric mix. This is specifically Dance Dance Revolution Eric Mix 3, aka Eric the Third. It's free to play as much as you want. If you want to come up and check it out, you know, talk to us if you're interested in checking it out some more, checking out the older mixes we've got. We also have Drum Mania Eric Mix, Dance Insaniacs, Pop and Death and Music, and Beat Mania G2 RDX in the Jumani series. We're just trying to make people happy. You know? we, want, we want people to be able to like play stuff, have a good time, and enjoy themselves. That's all. Hi, I'm Jake Huffman, better known as Vert. Actually, maybe not better known, but um, still known. And I'm here to rock your ass at the concert tonight, as well as... Earlier, I tried to explain uh, a little bit of what goes into the video game industry and uh, what pitfalls to avoid, what things you should do, and generally how the whole process works. Also have to be able to take criticism, which is something I haven't mentioned yet. You can't take criticism. You are dead. You will fail the first time. The best approach is to swallow your pride and do exactly what they want. I am Robert V. Aldrich. I'm the author of Cross World and Teach the Sky. I am very fortunate to be here at MAGFest 2.0. My panel will be held Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, which means none of you will be there. Everybody's in the back nodding their head. Yes, you're right, we won't. Oh, I'm just, I just ran out of all the copies of Cross World. There are going to be no more available until the book is released nationally. We have pictures that we're selling of characters from the book. 
as well as uh, the, a special edition anthology of my online serial Teach the Sky, which I'm hoping everybody who sees this has already bought, written, and enjoyed. I'm uh, Sam Michaels. I'm the owner of Zofar's domain, Zofar.net. We're going to put these on Zofar.net, by the way. So. <laughs> Preach on, brother! We got uh, Dreamcast coders cables to connect it. We got the now illegal uh, Flash Advance linkers. Adaptoids, connect your Nintendo 64 controller, all sorts of uh, S-Video cables and extension cables, and uh, the big hot rod joystick, the arcade controllers. Emulation, oh man. Here we go. Well, here's the issue. Back in the day, like maybe five or six years ago, it was all about playing the games that you couldn't play anymore. Atari, Nintendo, and it was a big challenge to be able to play those games again, relive your childhood. And then nowadays, it's pretty much perfected. And um, to be honest, I think playing these new consoles on the computer is just straight piracy. I gotta be honest with you. I mean, go spend the money, support these companies, and emulate the games that you can't play on the original hardware anymore. That's, that's what I think about emulation. We're from the website virtualfools.com, and we came to the con to give sort of like a lead a little discussion on just academics of video games and it sort of turned into just a discussion about video games in general and our website is mostly like entertainment stuff and we have a large focus on video games since that's what our interests mainly lie in. We had um, some good feedback. We had a guy who came to MAGFest who had emailed me on the website and he's like, dude you guys are awesome. You did this article on SNCC. It was really funny and I have tons of SNCC videos and I was like, come up to our table, say hi, and introduce yourself as a SNCC guy. So I'm sitting there like hammering at Mario 3. Some guy comes up and he's like, hey. I was like, what's up? Do you want to take a flyer? He's like, oh, it's a good site. He's like, oh yeah, you read it? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm the SNCC guy. I was like, you're the SNCC guy. <laughs> All right, nice to meet you. Quote, Sir Arthur's Warcraft 3, I will destroy this empire and from its ashes build anew. End quote. We represent a group called Empire Arcadia and we're from New York. We're a video game organization which promotes going to um, video game conventions and tournaments and we try to get people more involved in video games you know to help the um, video game industry grow bigger for the gamers as opposed to the uh, people who run the industry you can call me triforce for right now but my real name is isaiah johnson and i'm the ceo for empire arcadia and we heard about magfest was going to be this big convention in virginia so we thought we'd come down you know, hang out with all the local gamers, compete, play with them, and, you know, represent um, Empire Arcadia, which is literally the empire for gamers. We came here uh, with our artist, Zero G. Zero, look in the camera, say hi. Hello. He draws video game art and other stuff. He does commission as well. Tell me this picture. She does not look fat. Then we have the, um, the twins, Dominion and Craymore. Um, these your brother, your second place champion in a Pokemon um, Center in New York. That's Justin Wong, um, but he got he got called for a Halo tournament to go get killed in. Go, oh, let's go. We have another guy called Gaming Knight. He he's our um, video game developer. He does 3D Studio Max, Flash, and um, some other stuff. I'm not really into development, but he's our guy who designs our games, designs our music, that type of stuff. Well, in terms of Empire Arcadia, it's basically whenever somebody comes to battle Empire Arcadia, you know, because we have a certain hierarchy that we follow by, and, you know, I have to uphold the law of making sure that I play everything and anything that I can get my hands on to keep my skills fresh, uh, be it from fighting games, uh, even train simulators, can you believe it or not? Yeah, we actually had a contest where we played Densha to Go, and Game Master and myself was actually in top rank, and this was our first try playing it. So those are the type of things that I personally have to uphold. We attend the, um, like video game conventions so that we can get more people involved in video games, especially females, because that's something that the industry needs to work on. We're about competing, we're about participating, cooperative. We like to game, and we like everyone to have fun. It's all for fun. See the power glove? He has the power glove. E-unit. The Empire is amazing. Uh, someday, if I'm good enough, I'd like to join the Empire, but my skill isn't up there, but one day it will be. X Strike Studios exists because, like, video game movies from Hollywood suck ass. Yeah, hello, hello, hello. Before we 
got here for you, that we'll be playing after this year, we got our first uh, movie, a rough cut of our first movie. It's not completely done, there's still some stuff that has to be done with it. If anyone's played River City Ransom or NES, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's based heavily on that game. We showed River City Rumble twice, once uh, Friday afternoon, which was the world premiere, quote unquote. Were you the bad guy in River City Rumble? I was. You were tight, dude. Dex Strike Studios is a fucking bomb. We showed it again Saturday night for uh, anyone who wanted to, you know, missed it Friday night because of uh, tournaments or, um, which, which actually includes myself because I was losing the F-Zero GX tournament. The F-Zero tournament starts right after this. We might wait like another 10 minutes though in case there's a couple straggler signups. Tournaments going around the clock. There's just like some other tournaments today like Dirt Strike, Street Fighter 3 Dirt Strike at 10 p.m. And SoCal is starting soon. Well, I'm not really a SoCal person. I learned the game yesterday, but I'll try to do my best. The Soul Calibur tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That and Melee. The only game I'm really good at is Smash Brothers. I'm in the tournament, but I'm going to get my butt kicked. I'm much better at Smash Bros. Melee. It's like 60 people so far. I'm, I'm a DDR freak myself. Not very good, but uh, I play a lot. I play DDR and other random games. Uh, no, I didn't sign for the tournament. It's too embarrassing. Yeah, seeing the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 champion of the world was pretty cool. <laughs> Watching him kick his ass. Yeah, yeah dude. Oh, he is look like? really good. Where is he? Justin Wong is a little short Asian guy. Oh, Justin Wong. I got like Marvel 2, CVS 2, Third Strike, um, Alpha 3, and Super Turbo. For East Coast only, though. These guys are here. World champions. I mean, it can happen downstairs, just let me know. I won three tournaments. Which ones? Puzzle Fighter, King of Fighters, 2002, and CVS2. I played Justin Wong in CVS2, and I did my best, but he beat the living hell out of me. And I just want everybody to know out there that if you think you can beat Justin Wong, you're smoking some crack. He's unbeatable, especially in Marvel 2. He's a liar! I hope video game becomes a sport, so I can, I can get a lot of money. So if anyone ever says the Vanquist never gives up great things, I won this today in the tournament in Guilty Gear X2. I use Kai Kiski, and anybody out there, I am the real Kai Kiski. Oh, I, I play all characters. It's better to play all characters so you can know like their weakness and their strengths. Anyone he goes to, I'll be at. <laughs> no, but seriously, any tournament that's out there, I'm gonna go to. I'll probably make like 500 plays, but you know what? I'm trying. You didn't enter Pokemon Puzzle League. I'm saying I'm gonna bust your ass in some Tetris. See, it's the same. See, he's just he's scared. That's all. You can't play. You can't handle it. Tetris. See, here you go. If you got a computer, go home. Go get it. Bring it home. Bring it in. Turnout's been pretty good. Friday night, I had like four computers. I go to bed. And I wake up. And I've got twelve. Then I've got sixteen. Uh, land turnout this year has been really good. Uh, I've been, you know, a lot of people playing Counter Strike, such like that. I had a couple calls for Quake Three. Uh, Later on, we're gonna go old school. If the cold console people got River City Ransom, we've got Doom. So we're gonna get a game of that going on later on. It looks like sucks. Yeah, I'm Digimatic or Daniel. I'm part of Wave Theory. Did a couple remixes. Yeah, yeah. and I'm. Alex Escabel, known as A Rival. Yeah, I did a bunch of songs and remixes too. So yeah, we're both in this band. We have two other members that are not here. There's Jimmy Escabel, whose name is Surcut, but he's thinking of changing it. Then we got Jared McQueen, who's known as J Drive. Yeah, and we're all like a collective electronic band. We came all the way from California, so we're gonna put on a good show. Basically, there's gonna be a big jam session slash practice for the concert tonight which we are really looking forward to because that's the main reason we came out here, you know, to show these people a good time and play our music. My name's Stephen Kennedy. I work with uh, KFSS Studios. This is the guy who will just go out on a limb for everybody. The reason we're here at MacFest is we're uh, promoting our music. One of the first uh, commercially fan-produced video game albums. We're trying to promote our music. Uh, the first album was a tribute to Nobuo Amatsu and um, several, of our, several of our musicians are performing here tonight at the concert. Yeah, yeah, that's the first one. VGMix 2.0 just opened. Things are about to get nuts. We just opened a site that encourages good artists, bad artists, new artists, old artists, all sorts of people to come together and put their work on the website and get better. Sucky people can get better. Good people can get better. Uh, I can get better. 
I will improve if people give me feedback on my work. What's up? Is anybody here, like, I don't know, know anything about the, like, online video game remixing industry? Yes. Yeah. 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 I do music sometimes. I arrange music for BG Mix and Overclock Remix and um, all that stuff. Video game remixing, I think it's awesome. I'm like really into dance music and stuff, so uh, a lot of the remixes are that techno y kind of sound, and I'm just eating that up. It's, it's great. I'd do it if I had the talent. <laughs> I can't do it. A lot more people are getting into it. It's like, hey, that sounds pretty cool. What is that? It's like, well, it's video game music. Oh, really? I didn't know that. It's not like, you know, mainstream. It's, it's good, good hobby, good way to practice writing music and all that stuff. I mean, the people that do it, I think they're really talented. I, like, I wish I could do it myself, but I just, I just have to be a fan and settle for appreciating it. It's what I listen to when I study. Like, when I'm in the library, I got a bunch of CDs on of just video game remixes. I just like to see how, like, that, the homage paid to oh, all the game music. I think it's incredible. I'll tell you one thing. I would gladly, on a $2 million sound system, pop in the Mega Man 2 8-bit soundtrack any day over half the crap that's out now. Uh, the best word would be like overfilling, because there's so many people doing it now. There's lots of people just getting into it, and lots of people have been doing it for a while, and just won't move on and do something else with their lives like me. You know, I'm still doing it after like three years. And there's all these other kids that are just coming up, so there's tons of people just getting into it. To see, you know, now with the advent of new technology that anybody can sit in their bedroom and, uh, you know, remix a video game CD, you know, it, it, it's, it's something really special, I think. There are no bad influences upon remixing right now, so it can only go up. I wish it was a little more supportive across the board, and it tends to get a little bit like, your stuff sucks, my stuff's awesome. It gets uh, a little bit... A little bit cutthroat and competitive for you know what it is. It should just be fun. I think it'll take a while to get you know the mass appeal for for everyone to be actually interested or you know hear a video game song and decide that they want to you know buy a CD or something. But it could. I was up for like 36 hours straight. There was a lot of crazy ah, make me food! Whoever tries to stop anyone from having fun at my con is getting a punch directly in the face. Combined, I think I've had 10 hours of sleep. I am Satan, and I am tired, and I'm going to go to the same tired place. And I do not want fist fights breaking out who's using cheats, because if I see a fight, you're out, and I don't even want to deal with it. <laughs> People are sometimes sore losers because they probably personally don't like losing. That's why they like trying to cause trouble. Or sometimes if they like mess up a certain kind of combo, like that could cost them the whole match, they get mad and it like decides to like piss people off because they're like not in the mood for it, like this guy right here. Watching the tournament here, I think it was Valdo on Valdo, which was slick. And then, like, this kid comes over here, we hear a thud and turn around. The kid, like, wails on the wall, sees a Mario 3 poster on the ground, and just starts kind of kicking it, like, you know, that was that was what was wrong. It's just a game, though, but people don't take it like that, though. That's the first aggression I've seen. Probably the only, too. Probably yeah. The only, about the only, really. That kid's real stupid. At least it was a wall. <laughs> Oh yes, I've seen a lot of fights. In New York especially, in Chinatown where I play, all these Chinese people, they like they hate losing. Or they like, they hate like when people grab them, they always hate it. Like a regular grab throw, a command. It's part of the game and then they hate that. I don't know why. So then after after if they get grabbed, they they like start talking to you like, Hey, what are you doing? You know, it's not fair and then they get their tone of voice gets more louder and louder and it costs starts fights. It, this fight's everywhere because People have different opinions about things. Not, not, everyone's not the same person, that's why. This is like the South. South is like all peaceful. There won't be any fights, I doubt it. Down here, it's, it's safe. Actually, that's the best part. No, I may have an annoying person every now and then saying, please put this game on, hurry, hurry, hurry. But other than that, no, nah, it was pretty good. Everybody was cool. There's actually no theft. Problems with abuse is pretty minimal. Um, like, most of the people here are very, very respectable people. Like, they, they don't want to start shit, and they don't want to be involved in it. Yeah, there's a concert tonight, I think.
up, Mac Fest. How you guys doing? This is our first show. We didn't tell anybody. Then, like at the beginning, it starts screwed up, and I was like, "Oh no, this has to work out." This, you know, and it did. Yo, 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 check this out! I bust the game out of the blue. Soul Caliber, I do Soul Caliber too. It's the best for GameCube, and that's you know, because Link's in that shit. Tell me, so Link's the best character. I hate Hashi. What the fuck? At a second, get shit out of luck. You got a PS2, yo. So if you don't rock, you got spawn for the fucking Xbox. But hey, Hashi. are just totally awesome with me. No one has rock star syndrome, and it's really, really cool. My name is Sean Stone, also known as Ale Sean, and I remix video game music, and tonight I'm here to play with uh, Vert and Prozac. Before this afternoon, we never played together. We're gonna kick your asses. Are you on top? Are you gonna smash us? We're going to play songs you definitely recognize, or we're going to play them in ways that you don't recognize. This is Prozax. This is Ailshan. The violinist is Midi. This gentleman back here is Matt Pollard. The guys in there, Ailshan and Prozac, is probably the two best guitarists in I don't know, a 10 mile radius right now. They're just incredible. Everybody's gonna get up and play. Possibly at once. Imagine if we fucking rehearsed. Yeah, this is the fir our first time we ever played together. It was amazing, you know, the chemistry we had. Okay, I spoke, I spoke too much. Bye bye. I never played with these guys in my life, but we sounded fucking great. Yes. Very well done. Throughout the weekend's festivities, no other event was more highly anticipated than the headlining band for the concert. Hailing all the way from Phoenix, Arizona, was the most recognizable video game cover band, the Mini Bosses. Everyone at the convention was pumped and ready to receive slamming guitar renditions of their favorite NES tunes. Ben and I play bass. I'm Matt and I play drums. I'm Aaron and I play guitar. I'm Rod and I play guitar. So what are you going to be playing tonight? What's the lineup? We can't tell you that. No? We usually decide on the fly so we don't even really know. It's more or less what the crowd wants to hear and less what we want to play. Tech TV once. No. <laughs> no, we don't get paid for anything. We drove more than hours. And they're, they're great. <laughs> and they're a lot of fun to watch. And great rock and remixes. It's fantastic.
It's, some, it's something that you don't see often. You can play games anytime you want. So I'll go see that instead. I'd say I've been looking forward to it the whole time, but there's been so much to do that, you know, I was able to forget about it for a little while. Last year the show was absolutely just outrageous. It was the best experience I could possibly have with a band. They're like, listen, you fly us out, we'll play, that's the deal. I've never seen a crowd of geeks pumped up like that before. It was, it was pretty amazing. Those are our favorite shows. When the crowd gets into it, fucking comes right up to the stage in our face and it's like, ah! <laughs> Like so many people have heard the music, like and, and like love it. I don't know how much of it we can take credit for, you know, but like it's really good music when you write it. They have all the actual channels of the Nintendo covered, so they're playing music exactly how it was. Songs of my youth played out by rock and guitars, you know, was uh, quite an experience that I will not soon forget. I just don't see that many people coming to a video game convention. Last year, I think they had a little over 300 people. This year, it looks like they got about 500 going on, something like that. So it's already growing in, what, one year? This is only a second year, so you really can't say, oh, it's this fantastic con that's been here for years, or, oh, it's this terrible con that's been around and they've never done anything right. You know, all you can say is they're doing what they can and it's working pretty well. When I go to conventions or I hear about conventions, it's always about either one specific thing like, oh, it's just anime or, oh, it's just fighting. But this time with MAGFest, it's about anime, it's about fighting games, it's about RPGs, it's about strategies, it's about simulators, it's about racing, it's about puzzles, it's about shoot 'em ups It's about everything that everybody, including the gamers, are bringing to the table. And that's what makes MAGFest a really great convention. You can play DDR and then when you're tired, you can go watch Captain N. It's not about the bands that play, it's not about the special events, it's just about the gamers that come to have a good time. I think it's fucking awesome. Like, I don't know, like, when I first got here, like, there wasn't as many people as I thought, but then when I just looked around the room, every little computer console, every, everything was taken up, so, like, I realized, hey, this is, like, it's about as popping as it could get when everything's already, like, being used, you know, everything's, like, being taken advantage of, and everybody looks like they're having a good time, and, like, I think it's cool to bring this whole culture into one room. A lot bigger, I'll say that. Uh, last year, LAN, it wasn't that big. We had maybe 10 computers at the most. But uh, it's definitely a big improvement this year. Better than last year. And it was really awesome last year. Um, my primary experience in MAGFest is the people that come here, you know, to hang out with us, like our, our circle of friends, and we've been planning it for the past year. And the fact that they handed out ramen, um, when we registered was completely awesome. I think all the cons should do that because we're all starving college students. I especially like the location. I mean, it's crazy in Virginia. It's nice. yes. They need stuff like this more in the east, Philadelphia, New Jersey. It's great to have it in the Virginia. That's cool. So, you know, at least we have a start. The only other video game conventions are like A3 and Philly Classics. We did Classic Gamers Expo last year. That's oh, yeah. Sweet. And that was pretty sweet. Where's that? It's Vegas, in Vegas, Vegas usually. It's like one of the only type of conventions of its kind. And being that this is the second convention, it's good to see that it was um, successful the first time. And now as you can see all these people are here, it's even better. It's hella badass to like see like hella good people because like the people that are going to come to like a convention like this are obviously like really into video games so they're like yeah so like every game you play like where you thought you were actually good at you just hella suck because all the people <laughs> are playing for hours on end and you just it makes you feel good and bad at the same time but mostly good. I think the best part about it all together is that no one's causing any trouble no one's out doing crack on the streets everyone's sitting here video games left and right just out having fun everyone's friendly to each other everyone meets someone else hi I'm Eric hi I'm David and you got yourself a new friend just like that rather than being connected over the internet, you know, finally meet people that I've talked to for so long or heard about or just listen to their funny ass antics online, like, it's cool to see them in real life. And then it's like a fun experience for everybody that plays games, so it's like the people that's running it should get a lot of respect for it. 
basically just all I'm saying is bear with us, work with us, because we're doing this all for you guys. I'm not getting paid squat, and I don't think they are either. If I told all the staffers, okay, listen, at least every single one of you bring one system and one TV, and, you know, then we have enough, and then, like, we tell everyone else, hey, listen, bring your personal systems, we'll check them in, we'll take care of them. We have lockboxes down there. Brendan pulled it together, and I'm freaking amazed. All of my staff dropped out. Like, I mean, like, we, we were supposed to have, like, three times the staff we were going to have. We're going to owe the hotel probably about $7,000. We had a loss of power. Uh, we just had too much stuff plugged up. We were overdoing the, what the hotel could handle, so we had to rearrange some cords and such like that. But at one point, we had one wire so hot, we couldn't even grab it. So <laughs> we are, we're definitely pushing this hotel's limits for power. Asking around for, from me personally, I've noticed that a lot of people have come a long way. Bosses are Phoenix, uh, you know, Oakland for California. Wave Theory. Uh, we had some people from like top of New York. Uh, <laughs> no, Western like New even York. further than you, yeah. like Ontario. Will you run next year's con? I'm not going to drop out of this. I want to do it. M3 is looking good for next year. I hope it keeps going. I think this is pretty good for two years. Mm -hmm. Really good. I'm glad we got to play it both years. That's awesome. What I would hope to do see happen is at least see them branch out and make it more than one convention. So as an anime convention, they have a what, what, one every two months nowadays. But I would like to see more, like maybe three a year. That'd be nice. Just a place for people to get together, get their game on, and converse and have fun. X-Strike won the costume contest with a great skit done by Tom Barry, Slayer, Jasper, and Maximilian Royvis. Right Mage is like, wow, I really thought you guys were going to suck because your characters are just everywhere, but you pulled it together and yeah. I was like, yes, we Red, rock! Red Mage was such, he was another really cool guy that we met. Oh God, he's coming close. <laughs> but anyways, yes, I also oh, sir. <laughs> this game is oh God, he's coming. Would you, would you like to play a game with you guys? If you could be recording the amount of times we've been screaming, FUCK YOU CHAD! We oh. gotta give a huge shout out to uh, fucking Virtual Fools, because without oh, yeah. them, like, we were we were screwed. We thought we had, like, half an hour of tape left at the end of the Bosses concert, but we were out. We were totally out. It was the dead of night, nothing was open, and Virtual Fools, who, uh, whose camera broke down, had an extra tape for us to use, like, the very last They just second. gave it, it to us, like, it was nothing. That were, in terms of people finding us, it's pretty funny. We, we have this, this kind of web tracker that we can keep track of who finds us, what they search for. And uh, our, some of our favorite ones that people search and find our website are virtual bong hits. Virtual gravity bong hits. Virtual well. gravity bong hits. Virtual girlfriend to fuck. That's one of the ones that we get a lot of hits from. My name is uh, Steven Harrison and I'm a video gamer. And uh, I'm the best. This guy, owner of MacFest, is exactly the way I pictured him. <laughs> I beat him in CBS 2, there it believe is. it. I don't care what no one says, you know. It was kind of hard, but I still got the OCV. But <laughs> at least he didn't get the perfect. It's all about so the big W. Yeah, it doesn't. Right, Wong? Yeah. Right? See, he, he admitted it's not. Nah, only kidding. He, he scraped everyone. Yeah, he's the boss. Yeah, he's the emperor. Yeah, because consoles suck. I never saw DDR fights, but I see arguments, never saw fights. Like, arguments like, uh, oh my god, I can't believe I missed this step. I got a good instead of a perfect. And then the other guy be like, oh, stop whining, you're good already. You can't really have a fist fight on that. Kirby, 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 Kirby. I don't remember the rest of the words right now. <laughs> we wish there were a couple people that were there last year, especially, uh, one up. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say Master. It's a little Indian kid, and he got, he's a uh, straight edge completely, and he, he got so drunk. <laughs> he was guzzling vodka and chanting Indian folk tunes and licking the walls. <laughs> it was the best experience of my life.